afternoon, people. Good afternoon. Good Friday. Uh, what a week. What a last two weeks. Uh, I'm so glad to be back with you guys today. I really am. I really am. So welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Danny G Live. Uh, welcome to my living room. I'm really happy to be back today. Uh, with my Danny G Live, my labor of love, which I love and adore doing these shows. I really do. And um, as you can see, I put up a flyer for my dear friend, Moms, the poet, the schemer, who passed away suddenly last week, last uh, Thursday. Um, he was working, he was on set, he was doing what he loved, he was acting, he was doing his thing. And we lost him. And so I'm just starting this episode, giving him and his family, his beloved Jenny, all my love, all my prayers and support for them. Um, he will be missed. I met moms in 1998 when I first came on the music scene here in New York. He was part of this incredible melange of amazing artists and people and poets and and musicians and just everything and um and he was great he would come to my shows but when i first started sugar bush he would show up you know and he would do performance art in front of the stage and he was so supportive and we would go out for thank you stack we would go out for long nights of just talking at you remember when french roast used to be really 24 hours and uh just drink red wine so and french fries and so my toast to him and he'll be missed this is a hard one but i just had to, i couldn't start this show without honoring him today and this flyer this information um the community is coming together tomorrow from three to six at Bowery Poetry, they're doing an, a memorial to him. Sorry, my voice is shaking. Um, anyway, so there's a link in my bio um, for the memorial. You can RSVP. Everybody from our community is going to be on there coming through 3 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. Jessica Care Moore, Lisa Jesse Peterson, Sharif Simmons, um, Saul Williams, just, you know, all our people, all our people are going to come through tomorrow and, and show moms our love. We miss you moms. We love you moms. And we'll never forget you moms. And we honor and cherish you. And we'll hold up your people. So thank you all for allowing me the space to do that. And uh, again, welcome to Danny G Live. I have an amazing guest today. But I saw his, I see, hey, hi, Quail. I see your, your request to come in. Um, but before I get to that, I want to give a shout out to this amazing independent black owned company called Pushing Black. And this is the t-shirt that I have on. Okay, my superhero t-shirt. You know, I never used to be into themed t-shirts and everything else, but I don't know. I'm changing it up. <laughs> I love these t-shirts. So the company is called Pushing Black. You can find them and also in the link in my bio. And I had a couple of, you know, birthday shout outs. Um, today is the birthday of an amazing, <laughs> cute little dog, Prince Henry. He is the baby of my good dear friend, Kervin Planta Diesel. Happy birthday, Prince Henry. Tomorrow, my dear, dear friends, Dewan Wilson and Dwight Rhoda of Complexions Ballet, their birthdays are tomorrow. My friend Kendra, her birthday is on Tuesday. So Kendra Jackson, she'll actually be on my show later this month. So just to give us some little shout outs because, you know, we're staying strong, we're staying uplifted. And I love that people are, you know, trying to do their thing in this world, some positive things in this world. And that's why my guest today, I'm so excited about Mr. Iquel Shahi. He is my Philly brother. I just need to show you guys a couple of photos real quick. <laughs> because he has had such an incredible career. And again, he is my Philadelphia brother. I posted a lot of photos of him earlier, but if you didn't get a chance to see them, here he is. You know, he's the Lion King. He has his own company, Dance I Quail, based in Philadelphia that he founded and is the executive, direct, executive director of, um, he's a, you know, world-renowned teacher. He teaches all over the world. 
and he's just my good friend. Um, this was him performing back in, I think, 2013. I've had the pleasure of presenting not only his company, Dance I Quail, but he also performed on summer stage in this photo with uh, Music Expressions, which is a company run by Jamal Barnes, another amazing individual. And just, I mean, just so incredibly talented and smart and brilliant and uplifting to uh, the community. So without further ado, let me get out of these photos. Uh, let's see, how do I do this? Again, Instagram keeps changing things up. So I gotta make sure I don't <laughs> cut you guys off. So I'm gonna go and grab iQuail so we can get into it. I have so much to talk to him about. And I love this brother so much. Let me make sure my volume's up. Okay. Waiting for Aquail. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Danny? What's up? Come on, come on, Aquail. Shahi, with your Philly cap on. Okay. <laughs> you know what's, what's up, so baby? sad, though? It's like, now we see a red cap, we get triggered, and it's like, but no. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna do away with all of that. You know what's funny? Christopher Huggins said he saw me with a picture with this hat on, and, and that was his first thought. He was like, "Wait!" And then he had to look at it again. He was like, "Oh, he was like I thought you was tripping for a second, but then he saw the P." But yeah, right, yeah, right. no, I I gotta find the blue one, but blue didn't. No, didn't it's like okay. It we're reclaiming go. it. We're reclaiming the the color. That's okay. We're gonna reclaim hey, it back. Exactly. Exactly. How are you? I'm so happy to speak to you today because it has been. I mean, the whole year has been crazy, as we know. And here we are, a year into this awful pandemic. But just mm -hmm. everything else has been happening, you know, since last summer. Well, ongoing for us, but more visibly to the world since last summer with George Floyd. You know, the, the trial is going on right now. And it's also the weekend of, you know, the anniversary, the sad anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. And so, and then, as I mentioned earlier, my my friend passing suddenly last week. So I just want to say that I am so happy to be speaking to you on this Friday, my my return, <laughs> because <laughs> it's so comforting to my spirit and my soul. So I thank you for that. And um, so everyone, this is Iquil Shahi, my Philly brother, my baby bro. Yes. Please tell us how you are doing. I'm doing good, Danny. First of all, let me just say, you know, my heart is with you. I know Mums was really a dear friend of yours, and it was a beautiful opening to him um, that you, you led today. And I hope everybody shows up to the events that are going on. Beautiful light. I never had the pri privilege of, like, meeting him personally, but knowing everybody that he's touched or many people that he's touched, everybody always had glowing things to say about him. Plus, his art will live on, plus the, like, his passion for everything, um, his zeal for life. So... Um, I wanted to share my gratitude with you for honoring him in that way. Um, and just to let you know, I love you. So, uh, yeah, you course. know, what's so brilliant about him? Like when we first started hanging out, he was already being featured on the show Oz, right? On like HBO. That's, that was his big blow up, blow out moment. Um, and I remember him telling me the story when he auditioned for the show, he auditioned actually for another character. And I hope I'm getting this right, but he auditioned for a different character and the producers or directors or whatever were like, mm, we don't think you're quite right for that. And then he was like, well, can I read you a poem? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and he broke him down with a poem, honey. And they were like, you know what? Well, we're going to create this character. And then he became poet on the show. And he would come visit me uptown at Riverside Drive. You know, I would walk around the neighborhood with him. And, and you know, usually the guys in my neighborhood, they wouldn't pay me no money. <laughs> but when they saw me with him, oh, okay. I had all kinds of street cred. And they would see me afterwards be like, we see you, sis, because, you know, you know poet. You know poet. So, <laughs> oh, oh, I, I love that. Like, I love that. Like, so yeah. tell us how you've been doing this year and what's been going on with your company. I mean, I know you you know, got some grants and you're still choreographing. So I want to hear about all of it. Yeah. So um, 2021 has been like, it's been really interesting. I'm, I'm definitely grateful. Um, the pandemic in 2020 gave me an opportunity to like sit back, see what's going on. Of course, um, it was very difficult for me because for the past couple of years, I've been working specifically around Black men yes. um, and issues with Black men to follow up with a lot of work that I was doing with Black women previously. Um, but then to 
you know, constantly see the fallout of, over the murder of George Floyd and still watching that right now. Yeah. And then an, another dude um, in Philly, really close to home, actually like three blocks from where I, I grew up, uh, Walter Wallace um, was killed, murdered in Philly, um, I think in August or September. You knew him? Well, I didn't know him, but I went to school with a family member of his because, oh. I, you know, like West Philly is all small. Like that was, they were on 51st Street, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's been, you know, it, it galvanized me to get back into like not mm -hmm. letting the pandemic stop us from really building these relationships with men um, in Philly so that they have one, opportunities to release their own voices, but then two, um, to use art therapeutically. Um, mm -hmm you know, engaging, and then three, obviously, which is now the next step, um, turning that into a work. So right now, you know, that's what we're working on. I'm partnering with um, men who have been incarcerated through Mur Mural Arts program in Philly. Um, shout out to Mural Arts because yes! that's how I knew you. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, and so that's what's going on. So we are, it's called Public Enemy. We got a grant from New England Foundation for the Arts. Shout out to Nifa and then Dara, Sherry and Kristen, yes! the whole team there. Um, National Endowment for the Arts gave us a grant previously for this work. Painted Bride is a presenter. National Performance Network is a funder. Um, so, I, I mean, we're really blessed. And we had a couple of workshops with, with men around Public Enemies Music. Um, and they bust on me because I had a picture of a Gumby because I wore a Gumby and I was like, <laughs> Why y'all busted on me? That was the hairstyle when this music was out. They was like, nah, bro, you can't wear so, that ever to Dollar Project. Will the piece will the piece feature public enemies music? Well, that was the that was the hope. So um the way we kind of work is um public enemy was so central to us as the creators that we find that its social relevancy from the time it was created to now and even before still has vibrancy. So mm -hmm. What we do is we use it at the songbook and the catalog, the music, um, the, the lyrics as a through line to investigate what is the social experience for Black men? Yeah. Um, how do they build bonds? How do they love? How do they mentor? Yeah. You know, and how, how we can use that to like literally don't believe the hype. Eventually from there and working with the men, um, we'll figure out what songs are in the show, if any songs are in the show, how they get in the show, because we really want to work with them. Um, so that it's deeply collaborative on all ways. So I don't know yet, and I'm I'm inspired not to know because I really want the brothers to tell us what they think. I love that, and you know, I literally had all that in my notes about Public Enemy. Well, since we're already here, and yeah. I want to go back to it later so people don't forget to watch out for it. Um, some of your collaborators are, you know, people that I know. Daniel Carlson mm -hmm. is working on the poet actor that lives here in New York, the dramatist. Hey, Monique. <laughs> hey, Monique. Monique Martin! <laughs> Daniel Carlton is working on it with you. Um, Jermaine Terry, Alvin Ailey Dancer, who's also a brilliant costumer, a wardrobe yep. designer, and stylist. So shout out to Jermaine Terry. Mm -hmm. um, Munir Zaki, who I just worked with over the summer, this past summer, with Julaine. He was his uh, accompanist on his mm -hmm. workshop that he did. And little tidbit, he's also in Coming to America, too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that brother is working. His, that brother works. I'm so proud of y'all. I mean, I, first of all, like we talk, you know, here and there, we got some people like, chill. <laughs> but when I went back, I went and like really looked through your bio. To, and this, is, this has been happening all year long. First of all, I can't believe it. I've been almost doing this for a year, which I'm having a great time. But when I really go back and look through and start digging into research, my guess, the people I've known for years, and then I'm like, oh, oh, snap. Oh, that's my friend? And I'm so impressed. I'm so happy to be that impressed. I mean, I mean, let me, let me, let me do a master's of fine arts from SUNY Purchase, but also bachelor's from University of the Arts. Mm -hmm. Traveling around the world, teaching. I know you've been, I mean, I've seen your pictures, Australia. There's so much more I want to know about Rwanda. There's just so much that was, that's been going on with you. And again, I do want to get back to your show, Public Enemy, because I want to make sure we re remind folks about that. And I know you've been really open about your upbringing, yep. your childhood, growing up in Philly. And so, as I do with a lot of people, I really am curious, like, how, how does an Iquil Shaheed, growing up where we grew up, you know, the hoods of Philadelphia, how does Ooh. a young Black man like yourself and gay 
you know, get out there and get started? Yeah, I would say God first. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, so for those that don't know, like I grew up back and forth between um, living with my grandma I'm down um, in the Mantua neighborhood of Philly, which we call the bottom. And right. it's not surprising that it's called the bottom. Literally, it has one of the most um, difficult social situations um, in all of Philly. Probably the, the average household income at a high level is like, $17,000 a year. Oh. And so, um, but splitting my time between my grandma and my mom who lived in Southwest Philly and Bartram Village Projects, you know, mm. I, I needed something. Like, yeah. it, like something was like itching in me to get out. And so, you know, I did all the little drill teams because drill team culture was big in Philly. Mm. Um, shout out to people that are still doing drill team culture because that is uh, amazing. Um, and then, you know, that trek from southwest philly to the bottom you pass by preston and market street and you know right there on that corner of preston and market is banco and so um i think i would drive by drive by drive by you never know what's going on on the inside but if you listen you can hear the music coming out of there <laughs> and so when i got to high school when i got to kappa um all the students were going to danko they were like you got to do training program and so we auditioned for training program um Joe Myers Brown was like, yeah, y'all not good enough yet. So we're going to put y'all in the children's program. <laughs> and then, but, but a world was open to me, like, yes, like completely different, like, like studying with, you know, I had Kim Bears. I know Kim was on your show recently. <laughs> um, having Hope Boykin, like run around the studio and I like idolized Hope because she looked like me, like similar in terms of like skin tone. She used yes. to always rock a crop cut haircut. Um, but it was a, it was an opening of a world that felt like home mm -hmm. and everybody was calling everybody Aunt Joan or Uncle Louie. And I'm like, I don't know these people, but you kind of get absorbed into that culture. And mm -hmm. it became a way for me to like have a, have an actual home. Mm -hmm. And then it was all from there for me, at least. But, but I'm really curious, you know, I know you were on the drill team, but is that how you found your love for dance? Like you, how? When did you know you wanted to dance? Michael Jackson. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michael Jackson. Like, literally, like, I we, I, we had a black and white TV. And <laughs> I remember, like, Michael Jackson on the Coca-Cola commercial, like, and practicing for Moonwalk. And I would try to do it in the living room. Of course, I'm bumping into the glass table and all of that <laughs> stuff. And so my mom was like, put this little boy in, a, in, like, a talent show. And so when I was, like, five or six, like, I just copied all the Michael Jackson moves did a talent show. I won $5 at the talent <laughs> show. I had to get my mom $2.50 and then she, she took You're me Asian. to McDonald's. <laughs> right, right. And she took me to McDonald's and gave me a Happy Meal. But that's when I discovered my love for like dance and music. It was like watching Michael Jackson. Yes. Um, and that's how I got into it. Come on, Happy Meal. Come <laughs> on. Okay, that was your first paid gig. Okay, come on, Happy right, Meal. Right, so, Okay, so then you at Philo Danko and mm -hmm. Again, you've been very open and honest about, you know, your mother's um, drug addiction. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was, did you find that dance for you was a way to escape some of that and, and the neighborhood? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I was always looking for somewhere to get out. I think, you know, my mom's addiction was the reason why I was, I was split between my mom and my grandma. Yeah. Um, just because she was going to in inpatient rehab. Um, and yeah, I think through dance, it gave me that opportunity, like for hard discipline and structure and rigor. I mean, if you're growing up at Danko, that's what you get. You uh, get okay. like, you get structure, you're going to get discipline and you're going to get love. And I guess I was craving that as a 13 year old. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a, an abundant amount of it. And then, you know, I, I believe JB or Aunt Joan saw something very like unique in me. But she was always very like, like not really in um, hands on because the company was traveling a lot there. But she always had people around us. So Harold Pearson would pull me aside, and I didn't know who he was, but he would pull me aside and be like, "You know what? You remind me of a young Lewis Johnson." Yes. Um, and JB and Kim used to always say that because of my musculature, my like my disposition for dance. But well, your um, technique, like when I was going back and looking at some of your footage. I was 
said, Man, you are turn er, 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 on my page now. But I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, that it, it just came from that environment. It, it like clicked and I wanted to do more. And JB was like sending us out to everywhere and like Dolores Brown I mean, you class. Scholarship. Wait a minute, you got scholarships from like Pennsylvania Ballet, Ailey, Graham, Jacob's Pillow. And then like even one of the reviews, like I, I, the touched on from your website, technically superb and artistically infallible. Wow. Come, come wow. on, infallible. I mean, that's huge. Oh, yeah, I was shocked at that. I was like, thank you. I was really honor and it was one of the last performances that I was doing in New York and um it was a solo by a guy Christopher Ralph and I saw Christopher when I was in grad school at Purchase he was an undergrad and that was his mm -hmm. senior solo so shout out to Christopher Ralph it was yes like he did that solo and everybody erupted I was like let me commission him please I I must I must have this work and it kind of worked together and um the solo has a different life Mm -hmm. own, but that's where that review came from yeah. exactly in New York and I was I was grateful yeah so I'm a, I'm a smidge older than you <laughs> no you so, know what you're talking about okay can you remind me and I feel terrible because my memory is sometimes you know can you remind me how we met how did we oh <laughs> how I remember we met was you had just left um touring musically and you just got the gig with summer stage and Zane Booker and I were at some actually you hadn't gotten the gig with summer stage I think you were um still interviewing mm. and I was at summer stage with Zane Booker and Zane was like Danny G Danny G in the middle of the park at night and Zane introduced us there at summer stage what show um, was it I can't remember for part of me wants to say it was an Ailey show but Part of me also thinks it was something different. I just can't remember because, you know, summer stage was the thing we went to. Like when yes. I was a student at Ailey, like 211 West 61st Street was always like, we were marching in full force through that park to get us some seats for summer stage. Like it was like, we must do it. So I can't remember because yeah. I've so, seen so many shows, but I do remember that that's how we met. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bane was one of my first booking so I got hired in 06 and my first presenting season was 07 mm -hmm. um so I've had Zane's company I've had your company yes thank think, you so wait, much so that one time that we I presented you we were in Queens and I think we got through like 10 minutes and then like a lightning storm was coming and right. I remember watching the show and all I could see was like lightning bolts going back <laughs> but you know I was, I was like, trying to um Hi, sorry, folks. We're gonna have to stop the show. <laughs> and the crowd was not. They was like, "No, let's just no! wait. Let's just wait." And I think like some other things were happening administratively, and we we didn't want to test it. Um, and it was a beautiful day. It has started like so sunny, like this. Come on, natural light. You know, Mother okay. Nature with me, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but like then the lightning came over the. It was I think where were we? Red Hook? Is that the? It was. We Queensbridge, because where where we where we set the stage in Queensbridge, we're right underneath that 59th Street bridge, I guess. So mm -hmm. there was nothing but metal all around us, so we couldn't take that chance. But as you see, I was looking for a Diana Ross moment. I was like, <laughs> "You're not afraid of a little rain, are you?" <laughs> and meanwhile, slipping and sliding, okay. right, and about to strike. <laughs> okay, well, look, look, we don't we don't pay enough for nobody to get electrocuted up on our stage. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, so, so so right so you're going so I didn't realize you went to Kappa until I read mm -hmm. that in your bio um mm -hmm. and so did you stay there until graduation yep I barely I barely graduated oh my god they was on me like lord have mercy um but yeah I graduated there um and shout out to Ladiva Ladiva Davis who's still there I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken long-term teacher mm -hmm. um but she was a supportive agent she was like making sure and we all got to Danko and she would call JB if they recognized like students had talent, but may have a troubled household. I recognized that at some point they was always calling each other back and forth to set up support systems for the kids <sighs> without the kids even knowing. <sighs> and, and so I would ride my bike from like Kappa down on Broad Street to Danko. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my tires would be blown out and then magically like 
I would have a new tire because, you know, Seth was always going on strike every three days. Okay. <laughs> but I wanted to go back. Let me go back one thing. I about you and Summer Stage. I'm so appreciative because because you and Summer Stage gave Dan Fakwell some of our first like presenting opportunities to learn and get our, our word <laughs> out there. So I wanted to thank you for that. And I, and I also wanted to thank you because I don't know if you know, but um, DC DC and Dan Fakwell, Debbie, Debbie Blunden Diggs and I have always been talking about how our companies, there seems to be this parallel and mm -hmm. It was the first dance I quell um, summer stage performance was in the Bronx and mm -hmm. it was with DC DC. And so that laid the foundation for like Debbie and I always like rocking together and yes! we, we had such fond mem memories of that time. So I wanted to thank you oh, for that. Oh, thank you. You know, I was, I did this exercise recently, just being all sentimental and some time on my hands. Um, I, looked at all the companies that I've presented since 2006 and the majority of those companies were um, and are first time companies playing the festival. Like literally 80% wow. of the companies that I've booked debut companies for the festival, um, predominantly of color, just, you know, community. And mm -hmm. I, I just felt really proud. Like, I felt really proud of that and, be, and being in this position to be able to give you know friends like yourself opportunities and but not just friends like i'm gonna throw you up on stage you can do whatever but exactly. actually be festival ready like not yep. just you know like you guys are ready for that stage so yeah. it's been such a such a pleasure and a gift and i can't wait to see what's what's next for the festival i mean obviously we've been hit hard with the covid pandemic Right. Um, so more to come on that, you know, we'll, we're, I think we're trying to make an announcement by the end of the month that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do um, this summer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Kappa, going through a first little day in COVID with Aunt Joan, honey. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Aunt Joan, how much do we love Aunt Joan? Uh, Setting us up, getting us ready for life. Can, more than we can even say, right? Definitely. Like, I, if you are Black and dance from Philly, that institution and on Joan as an institution as an institution as a person like yeah you know, we all, I, mean, I remember we all my first audition and going through the program when I went to training program it's not even just about the technique and your discipline and the seriousness I mean she kept on you about your hygiene yes yes can we talk about okay she was like wash them under them arms okay. I think I got called out a couple times oh. you know you 13 and you like you know, you running from class to class, you're like, uh-uh, go. And you, and you learn, like, that's what I mean, that structure, like, and it was, it was, like, it was very straightforward, but it was yeah. life skills, right? It wasn't just about dance at Danko. And there's a lot of institutions, with all due respect to them, that are very much interested in the dance and the dancing, and Danko very much is. But if you grow up at Danko, Mm -hmm. It is something different. It is about life skills. It is about respect and like how do you deal with each other. It literally is a family. I mean, when my mom passed, JB was mm -hmm. at the funeral. Yeah. Donald Lunsford came to the funeral. Like those yeah. those sorts of things. Like when um somebody is sick or like when I show up at Danko, even it's not even about death. When I would show up off tour, the first thing JB would say is, How's your family? Not how's your plea or your flatback. Right. Like, how's your family? And so you kind of grow up like oh, okay this is about life this is about how to be an adult how to be a person exactly. in the world and so yeah i'm grateful I think you like working with people day after day and they never ask you about your family right that's 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 another story for the time <laughs> but so um or just like you know what, what was that thing recently i forget her position excuse me my my eyes are watering from just feeling so emotional but you good the woman that was doing the presser at the White House recently, and she was like, good morning. Oh, right, and then she pointed to her ear, it was like, what is that? Uh, good morning, <laughs> she got them gathered up so fast. Oh, yeah, like, that's what I'm talking know. about. That's mm -hmm. what JB instilled in us. These legends walk into a room, Kim was talking about that too. You mm -hmm. stand up. Yep. I remember taking class with, you know, beloved Denise Jefferson, and she walked and you stood right up until she told you to Okay, take the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be together. Yep. 
Yes, come on. I mean, yes. so there's some of that I think that's missing. Yeah. Um, in today's world, just in general, not in just in dance, but just in general, just yeah. the lack of respect for our elders, mm -hmm. for each other. Just to, you know, what happened to kindness? What happened yeah. to kindness? Yeah. You know, empathy and compassion. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but so Kappa, then you go to U Arts. Yep, I went to UArts for a year first. Um, my first, my freshman year, Fred Benjamin had asked me to dance in his company. So I was going from UArts, I was taking my like eight o'clock ballet class up until like four, and then I would run over to um, Suburban Station in Philly, get on the R7 and then New Jersey Transit to be at Ailey by, I think we have rehearsal at like 7.30 or something like yes. that, so I rehearsed from 7.30 until like 10, and then I would dash the Port Authority yeah. to get on that 11.15 bus. Um, and so I did that for a year, and then after that, I had gotten um, a couple offers, but one that I took was to dance with Ron for a little bit, um, Ronald K. Brown Evidence. Yes. I always adored Ron's work, um, and just like that connection to here it is, another Black man, and with a similar openness about experiencing uh, being raised by his mother, growing up in Brooklyn, going to church, like there was a deep connection there for me. Um, mm -hmm. But then that took me to Lion King. Um, yes. Yet, yet another black man with Aubrey and Aubrey was yes. on me. Ooh, talk about somebody that was all on me. Aubrey Lynch the second. <laughs> Aubrey don't play, honey. Like he is okay. now with these kids at HSA, Harlem School of the Arts. And really beautiful too. It, that's a really beautiful fit for him. I've, I've seen him from the periphery like building that program and, um, but where he was thinking about having it go and where it is, even for him is like, mm -hmm. it, he was thinking it was here, but it is like way up here. I can't even fit it in my screen. And it's, it's really quite nice to see a new school. Um, HSA isn't new, but a new school program that is deeply invested in black folk and black mm -hmm. kids and training mm -hmm. come up in a cell in a time where you know, we're, we're struggling to fight for equal rights and equality in the dance field, but then you turn your face to the side and like you see Aubrey and people like Aubrey doing it. And it's a reminder that we can do it because we've always been doing it, oh. right? <laughs> okay, yeah, listen, I ain't get my wine say, yet. Say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> well, okay. We have always been doing it and we will we've continue been here. to do it. Right, we have been here, so. It's just so frustrating and infuriating to me that we, that, that, this struggle for equality is still going on. I am just, and I'm beyond, I'm beyond angry. I'm, I'm more annoyed. It's mm. like, we have, first of all, we don't have to prove it to anybody, but the fact that we still have to keep proving ourselves and proving ourselves, and, are you serious? Right. And that's, again, we keep talking about getting these seats at the table more and more, we just gotta create them. Right. Well, uh, what, what, was, what was the home chick from overseas? Um, I forget her name right now. Oh, my God. But she was like, I don't want to see that at the table so you can tell me when to have to get up. I want my own banqueting hall, right? I want my own whole entire world. I don't want to see that at the table, right? And I've been fortunate enough, as I say that, to have seats at the table. I'm on the board for IABD, being on the board for Dance USA, yes. and being able to, like, learn and share and push the field. Um, even a little small, small inch is good, but I'm like, I'm trying to be out here creating my own Wakanda, right? Oh. And anybody that wants to be part of it, we you can be part of it, but I want my own Wakanda and I want right. I want us to have our own. So And it's not even about being separatist or anything like that. It's but we're in twenty twenty one and we're still fighting for scraps. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. So wait. what we have to do, build your own. So let let's talk about this. Okay, so let's oh, take wait, 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 wait. I feel like nobody <laughs> So I'm, I'm teaching, and so I'm teaching a class, and I put this on my Facebook page, right? Um, and I see Melissa in the chat. So shout out to Melissa Young, Dallas Black da Dance Yes, Dallas Black! Um, but I'm teaching, like, students, like, how to make meaning out of dance works. Like, like that is not just people doing, again, pirouette, pirouette, bop, ma. I mean, some of, some of them are, and that's great. But more often than not, there's something deeper that the artist is trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. Long story short. Um, I teach at a predominantly white institution, and so we're watching Rainbow Around My Shoulders, and, you by know, Donald McHale. by Donald McHale, 1958, uh, 1959, and 
the students were like, yeah, so like, when are you going to talk to us about how this work is about slavery? I said, <laughs> what now? <laughs> what? Where did that come from? And so, I... you know, they had been taught like these works, like um, Rainbow and, and Revelations was about slavery. And I was like, who was teaching y'all this? So long story short, I had to like put on PhD Professor Aquel mode and be like, yeah. listen, we might talk about um, angst and sorrow in our works, but our works are so much more about beauty and joy <laughs> and love and bond building and uplift, even if it is in the most tumultuous situations. Mm. And then I was like, but, but why am I telling you, pay me to teach the class, you move Thank out you. the way. Um, and there's tons of us who can who have that knowledge, who've done the works, right? Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I say all that to say, it, it just comes back to us having our own, where we don't have to make that fight for our validity, because we've been valid with or without them, and we will continue to be valid, and our works Absolutely. and our perspectives will be, so... Well, also, too, that, that, you know, that monolithic thinking of, you know, we can only do one thing, or we only have one story, again, it takes me back to... It, so in my presenting days now with with, um, with Summer Stage, and I'll just never forget this one choreographer came up to me to at one of my shows. I think I, I think I told you the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had been sending me, you know, packages and submissions, and I'm sorry, the work wasn't up to snuff. I'm sorry, I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so I will just politely be like, you know, thank you, but maybe not this year. I'll do the follow up and blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. So she decided this one particular season, she was going to come find me. Uh -oh. And she, I guess she just wanted to let one to know face to face why her work wasn't being presented at summer stage. So whatever. But anyway, she rose up on me. Uh, I was working with, it was actually uh, Rennie Harris's junior company. I had Rennie Harris's junior company out in Queensbridge, Raw, who are top notch. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's like Ailey 2, Ailey 1. Raw, Rooney Harris, Pure Movement, like really great. Mm -hmm. And so I'm out there watching the show. I'm out in front and I see from my periphery, because the dancers, we got the peripheral yep, yep. Oh, 20 yards out. I saw her mm -hmm. coming and she was heading straight for me with her bike. And she starts talking at the side of my head because I had on my lamb and whatever. She didn't, she didn't think I was me, first of all, because mm -hmm. I'm black. She just thought I was like working there as like an intern or a security. I don't know what she thought. But right. first of all, she starts asking me, who's this on stage? What's happening? Not even excuse me, but blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, this is Rennie Harris Raw and the show just started and please enjoy. Like, right. Right. <laughs> like I'm trying to watch my production. Of course. And so she walks away and then she walks back over to me and says, like 10 minutes later, I see her coming again, right? And she says, uh, are, are, not even, again, not even excuse me, but are you Danny G? Oh! Uh -oh. And I was like, yes, I am. And so then I could, I could feel her now looking me up and down, right? Mm -hmm. And now she realizes, oh, this is the person I was looking for. And then um, I guess she could tell by my stance that I, was a dancer at some point, you know. And so she asked me, oh, were you a dancer? And I can't mind you, this is during my show. I'm trying to be as polite as possible, right? <sighs> and I was like, yes, Philodenko, Alvin Ailey, yes, thank you. I'm just watching. Do your research. Okay, anyway, sorry, I'm gonna be quiet. No, right. Mm -hmm. Then she goes, so do you only book black dance companies? Girl. Okay. That right there, I was like, first of all, again, do your research. Because on that particular season, I had Graham, I had some. Uh, don't but, is he, but that's when I responded to you. But so what if you did? It's, it's, it's about the work, right? It's about the quality of the work. And nobody's going around to any of those other big presenting houses that I'll keep nameless and be like, right, do you only present white works? Are you uh, only presenting Graham and Taylor and Momix and, Pal and Palabalists that happen to be regulars on your season? And that's right. great. But it it's always a different standard yeah. when it comes to us right. um, without that same mirror being held to Exactly. Um, it's like that famous people. interview with Toni Morrison where the woman asked her, you know, why do you only write about black stories? Or why don't, mm -hmm. why don't you write about whites? <laughs> no, <laughs> right. why? why? Her, 
her clapback was real though on that. And she was like, "Cause I don't censor y'all in my work." Like, <laughs> like I mean, me as a dance presenter for the city of New York. I mean, I love all types of dance. I love all types of people. I'm going to present everything. But the fact that she assumed, because I'm a black woman, mm -hmm. that I only present black dance company, like I wouldn't know anything about Limon or Graham or Parsons or Bashem right. or just whatever else, it was so ignorant. And so right what? in that moment, I shut her down. I was like, I need to go backstage. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and, I, and I made a mental, mental note, not on my watch will this woman ever get presented by Summer State. I, I refuse right. to say her name because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't, saying, we don't give validity to those to those people in that way of thinking. But e even still, like Pascal Rue's company was presented under oh, your yeah, watch. Yes. Carol Armitage. I mean, I remember some great, um, diverse performances on the stage. But anyway, again, it always comes back to us needing to be in proximity to whiteness to somehow validate who we are. And you know, um, no shade to anybody else, but I I'm just not trying to move like that anymore. Right? Like. Period. Like it just is not. It's just not how I'm trying to navigate. It doesn't mean like working cross community isn't a thing. Actually, I'm. Wor I always work cross community. Um, let me rewind. Interestingly, somebody else just made that similar comment. Well, it seems like Aqua doesn't want to work with white people. I'm like, mm, but if you actually realize who I work with, that's not true. So what is it about you that you see it that way? Um, right. And so because I am about the uplift of Black people doesn't mean that I'm anti anything else. Um, but yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's so much to be said on that. I mean, and I want to definitely, I want to do like bigger group conversations at some point. I want to, I'm going to spread this, this live moment out and do some <laughs> Zooms live. And gee, gee, gee. <laughs> this is like a, this to me is like a whole group situation um, mm -hmm. that we're all dealing with this madness, you yeah. know? Um, so back, get back to your career, speaking of like, like diversify. So you, mm -hmm. and I had forgotten that you're dance with evidence, which is so great. Ronald K. Brown, mm -hmm. how much do we love him? I um, love him a lot. Lion King. And then, so wait, 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 wait. What? What? You know, what? I have got to ask you about Hot Feet. <laughs> I knew it was going to come up. What? Like, so, so shout out to Maurice Hines. How yes. You, I mean, I think at the time, um, what Hot Feet did for me and I think the rest of the cast, except for like the great Ramon Flowers, who was on there and like on everything. I, I Shout out to Ramon. I have to be like... Another Philly to, baby. Yeah, exactly. Like I have to tell you this story. When I met him, I was like, oh, you're Ramon? And I ran down his resume. So he was like, oh, you did your research. I was like, yes. Um, Company National de Dancer, uh, Maurice Beja, Ballet, oh. Waves Jazz Dance Theater. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Um, and so, but for all of us, I think it came at a time where, again, Lion King and then Color Purple were the only two hot Broadway shows at the time. I think Dirty Rotten Scoundrels mm -hmm. won for like Best Musical or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and, you know, here comes Maurice Hines and Maurice White, the late, great Maurice White, founder of Earth, Wind & Fire, mm -hmm. offering us yet another opportunity to showcase our cultures and the ways that we that we see it and we share it through the music through the love of earth wind and fire music and happen to do it at, on the biggest broadway stage right um it, i think it's like 1800 seats at the mm -hmm. at the um, the, the Hilton fort. Theater where we were it's the fort now right yeah um and so for me it was great i was taking them them checks to the bank every thursday like thank you <laughs> buy my house thank you um, but I think it did that for all of us, and it brought us oh, all sure. together. Yeah, yeah. But outside of that, look, I'm a slide off camera. Where you going? <laughs> Nowhere. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, were you with the show for the entire run? Yep. From work. It was brief, but you know. Yeah. For, from the workshop to like the. I mean, the way we found out, I think Holly Wright and I, shout out another Philly person, yes! um, doing major things. Um, Holly Wright, I believe it was Holly or Dion and I, we were at the movie theater and um, it, it just happened to go across Broadway lot, uh, Broadway world that Hot Feet was closing. We was like, well, we didn't even know. Oh, wow. Like, but it was a launching pad for a bunch of, a bunch of sure. people. Michael Balderrama, um, 
Dwayne Lee Holland, who like has his MFA yes. now, um, big hip hop star, also with Rennie, um, Carla Garcia, like so many people. I'm I'm and grateful was, to all of them. That was Debbie's daughter, right? Yeah, Vivian. Oh, Vivian. Listen, okay. Vivian was out there. Twer we were in D.C. Debbie Allen's our... daughter, Vivian, twer or early, honey. Yes, we were in D.C. during the out of town tryout, and I think like. She she wasn't always feeling well, but Viv got out there even when she wasn't feeling well and performed her life off. Yeah. And I was just like, it's just like that sort of dedication and commitment as a cast that we had, um, even though the show didn't last long, I just, I'm so grateful to the cast members for their professionalism mm -hmm. and like how much I learned. Daryl Spires would be singing mm -hmm. backstage in the dress room. Um, Keith David, the famous actor Keith David did the show for a while and mm -hmm. he was a hoot backstage. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Broadway, and I, you know, never say never. Broadway is something I've always wanted to do. Um, you know, I've been on movie sets. I haven't, you know, done any kind of like lead roles in movies, but I've been on movie sets and mm -hmm. obviously I've toured as a singer with some pretty major foes. I've toured with my band. I've really toured, but I had my band out there in these streets all these years. Mm -hmm. Toured the world as a dancer, but Broadway is something that I've not quite been able to, you know, get up in that world. But, you know, you never know. I'm still considering some acting things. I would love Listen. to act. Listen, I mean, you know, there might be like the Danny G live show on Broadway or something. You know, I I think there's an investor that might invest in that show. <laughs> like, we can write it. Sugar, Sugar Bush the musical. Like, I come mean, on. Can I just tell you, though, um, and I posted this the other day, you never know who's watching. Um, and I mean that. So, kids, be on your P's and Q's out here in these streets, how you show up for things. Because yeah. I have gotten such validation over the last couple of weeks of people reaching out to me to to offer their artists to come on my show. Just like with Gwen and you, mm -hmm. right? You're a new executive director, general manager. General manager, yep. General mm -hmm. manager. So you're part of that actually too. Um, and, you know, my guest that I was supposed to interview last week, you know, before uh, mom's passing was uh, the beautiful Tamisha Guy from mm. Kyle Abraham's company. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna reschedule her to the 16th, but it's and again, it's just been incredible. So I don't know where this is going to lead. I am looking for sponsorship, so I'm just saying. Okay. okay because I'm everyone who's been coming on, I appreciate. It. I thank you all for doing it. And you, you're included. People are just coming on for the love. And if I can, you know, give donations for people while we're talking, it's amazing. And mm -hmm. I always tell people to support the companies or the organizations or the artists that I have on. But I would love to be able to give a little honorary to my guests. <laughs> yeah, come on. Can you imagine? Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> I can't imagine. So if you're come just on. joining us, I am talking to my Philly baby. I always say my baby brother, because you are. I am. <laughs> and I always actually wanted to have a baby brother. Um, I call Shahi from Philadelphia and dancer, choreographer, professor, teacher, dance teacher around the world. Broadway veteran, um, working on, working in, you know, for, in his community, which is also the reason why today I'm so glad that you're my guest today, leading into, you know, the anniversary of Dr. King's passing, mm -hmm. assassination, let's just call it what it is, assassination. Absolutely. Um, but also, too, you know, we're even in this climate with the, the George Floyd mm -hmm. uh, trials, and I've been kind of avoiding watching it, honestly, because I just... It's too much. Um, but yeah. I did go to the gym the other day and it was up on CNN and I, I was just looking at, like peeking at the screen, but I could like read underneath. Even that yeah. was yeah. devastating. Um, yeah. So. And no, like, but so that's where like Dance I Quo is, it, our mission is really special to me um, because we live at this, this intersection of like dance, social justice and blackness. And so. Yes. For me, it's like, okay, yes, we will do high, um, high artistic works at the highest um, levels of excellence, Public Enemy being one, our work Black Swan being another, um, a new show that I'm working on called Relapse being a third, um, commissioning mm. great artists, commissioning choreographers to come in. Um, I have a list of choreographers that don't know that I'm looking at them. <laughs> say, like, yes. Black women and trans artists, Black trans yeah. artists, know that I'm looking at y'all. But 
the third aspect of it is that in 2020, Dan Taquel was like, listen, if we're about if we're about this life, let's be about this life. So um, taking cue from Stacey Abrams and the whole movement down in Georgia, um, we started organizing get out the vote campaigns. Um, we did um, for the first time, we did a uh, a protest rally in the wake of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. Uh -huh. Um, we got drill teams to come out, Dan Taquel performed, we kept everything social, socially distanced. And oh, yeah. um, that was one of the highlights of 2020 is like, okay, how can we actually do things that are, are really community oriented and not just use the word social justice, but actually like live it. And so, and right. so that was how, how we were doing it. And then went around to polls, we were, we were dancing on election day in, in the polls and get, driving our community members to the polls. So yes. um, I can't wait to expand that arm of our organization yes. as well. Um, Please count yeah. me in, if I can get down there and be a part of that. Because mm -hmm. you know, what, what we see happening in Georgia, and they're trying, they, they're so mad. Yep. They're so mad we voted. And when I yep. say that, let's be clear, we know who they are. Yes. There are these white supremacists are hanging on, but with the, by the by their claws. Yep. That's who the they is. Yep. I'm not trying to generalize white folks, but that they they're yep. so mad. They're yep. so mad that we voted and, mm -hmm. and 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 took advantage of our actual rights to be citizens in this country. And we and we voted and we came yep. out and we we affected change. Yep. And now they're trying to shut it all down because they're mad. Right, and that How narrative they? is like like black people don't vote. No, we haven't been allowed to vote in the numbers mm -hmm. that we had that we have been recently. Yeah. But we we are out here for this life. Like we're part of this country and and we are citizens and we have that right to our voice. You take our tax dollars, we're gonna uh, show up at these polls. We're gonna be oh, here. We're gonna be in every facet of our society. Thank so you. I will call on you like definitely, you know Come on. We, we got that relationship. But you know, I see something in the chat and I know we gotta get to it. You see Melissa's comment? What'd she say? Oh, we're gonna wait, wait, wait. We're gonna get there because you know it's in my notes. <laughs> but I'm gonna make sure I read this because this is Iquail Shahid's mission statement for Iquail, for Dance Iquail. My mission was to create a relevant, and I wanna get back to that word, a relevant company that would educate and empower dancers and the audience while also bringing a positive influence to inner city youth and their, through education and community initiatives. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. But but tell me, but tell me what that that word re relevant means to you. A relevant company. Yeah, I mean, relevant company to me, like again, it was it's about this intrinsic connection to the people we serve. Like you know, the, a model of dance that um had been really uh, used for a long time is like artists create the work and then we do outreach. And for me, it was like, okay, that's a great model. If I want to be in this field, I want to respect that model and then also move in a different model. And so um, relevance in this context happens to be we're so intrinsically tied to our people and the needs of them that we can't separate one from the other. Meaning the way we create work, who is on, the, on those stages, who's in our offices, who's on our board, who is, um, you know, uh, at our ticket office is all based on working with inner city Mantuans or inner city black and brown Philadelphians first and what they say their needs are. Mm. And, and as an artist, executive director, then it's my job to facilitate those needs. And so for, again, so if, if our need or if their need was to get to the polls, we created artistic programming that got them to the polls and still allowed us to dance and, and yeah. give them artistic experience. So that, that's what it means to be relevant to me, like deeply tied to the people and their needs. Thank you for explaining that. That's beautiful. And this, what you just said too, comes up a lot. Who's on these boards? Mm-hmm. I got you. So, <laughs> let me see what else I, I had up on here. Danko program. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what you also said, what I love, you know, you're, you're trying to get to a healthier Philadelphia dance community. We're artists, and maybe it is time to re-examine our goals as people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just yeah. recently said that, right? Because of COVID and everything else. Well, yeah, we're like people first. we're people first. So, you know, interestingly, in Philly last year, the mayor slashed the budget by, for the arts by 75% and had threatened right. to eliminate it completely, right? But when you look at Philly, like, how, 
how can you take art out of Philly, period, and think you still have a city? Like mural arts, um, shout out to mural arts in that way, and Danny G being in that, what, uh, were you in like a little post from Joy? On Lombard Street, broad and Lombard. First of all, I was so depressed. When, okay, so my ex-boyfriend at the time, he kept saying to me, get a photo of this mural because, you know, you don't want to miss or God forbid they take it down. And I was like, yeah, right. yeah, 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 I'll get to it. Because it was at Broad and Lombard, mm -hmm. that photo of me, Orlando, and Evelyn. Yep. We were doing Joy, and there's Evelyn leaping above us in La Valse by Jean Hill mm -hmm. Sagan. And sure enough, yep. <laughs> they got yeah. torn down. <laughs> But uh, I was but able it, to find a picture of it through the mural arts website or something. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but no, that 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 mural will, even though it's replaced by another mural and heavily a, a Danko mural at, at that, mm. you will always be in our heart. Uh, yeah. in that mural for sure. <laughs> and joy by the great Milton Myers. The course, Milton obviously. great Milton Myers, who just turned 70, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So a couple things. So in Philly, they slashed the budget, and Philly wanted to come together, and they used, they they asked me to help, uh, like, the steering committee write a letter to the mayor to try to save the budget. Um, and all sorts of language was about George Floyd and racial inequality. The budget got slashed, and then the whole Philadelphia dance community, for the most part, like, kind of went back into our silos. And if people don't know about Philly, Philly is, for, for all, like, um, transparent talk is a deeply segregated city. It is. Um, and like, I don't think people talk about that enough or mm -hmm. know enough, but but so true is the dance community. So, you know, in October, I sent the email. So that was June. October, I sent the email. I said, oh, so Black Lives Not Matter anymore since we don't have our budget. Mm -hmm. um, a, a couple other dance artists said, you know what, you're right. And so as a collective, Dance I Quell, um, Nicole Canuso, who is an artist there, also NEPA funded, um, and Catherine Stark, an independent choreographer, we came together and we started to um, once a month have Philly conversations with the Philadelphia dance community to try to get us back at the table. Mm. Um, but child, there's some stuff that come up. I was like, I was really? ready for it. Yeah. Um, like what? Can you, can you share anything? Well, just like, well, I mean, it's the normal stuff. Like, this person doesn't like this person. This person does like that person. And so oh, people don't Christ. show up. And then we're, we're like, we're about social justice. But most of the conversation stems around money. And so mm -hmm. then when we name that we want to be about social justice, some people don't come. Um, and then so I had to get on my bullhorn. And if anybody knows me, you know, I'm not short on words. And I was like, <laughs> we are not about this. Like either you coming or don't come anymore. So thank you. Um, but they've come together. We slowly but surely we're trying to like get everything on the table and um, and it's cross like art uh, institutions of higher learning, dance community, um, indigenous community, queer community, and dance. Um, and so I'm proud about that arm as well of dance. Like well, is like trying mm -hmm. to really get our Philadelphia community back together. Yeah, I'm so proud yeah. of you. Thank you. You better be speaking up for the kids. I, somebody got to listen. Uh, we that's gotta what I'm continue saying. To work. Yeah. So I, I got, really want to get back to. So what 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 season is this now for Dance at Quail? This is our 14th. We're closing out year 14 and about to enter year 15. Oh, <gasps> wow. Ooh, yeah. So um, year 15 and our big premiere this year is a Public Enemy, like I was telling you about. Um, and so we're going to film it in the courtyard of Eastern State Penitentiary. Um, yes! Yeah, so we're working yes. on that now. Um, I'm still looking for, for dancers, male dancers, whether they're cisgendered or trans men, um, black men dancers. So, um, so yeah, um, that's, that's the big premiere of the season in the great Carmelo Dasser. You have to get special permissions to film in front of there. Well, Eastern State Penitentiary has come on board as our partner, so we have three no, yeah. So Eastern I, State Penitentiary, I yeah. You know, That's major. You Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm out here hustling. Oh. Yes, you are. <laughs> come. That's major. Yeah, thank you. So they they are they Eastern State Penitentiary is our major partner, um, second to the Painted Bride, who are who mm -hmm. has been great, Laurel there what? and. And mural arts. So those three are our partners. Mural arts has been partnering us to work um, with 
uh, formerly incarcerated Black men and women and paying them to work with us. Yes! Um, we're going to also train them in theater production. And some of them are, like, amazing artists that they never had the opportunity to, like, rap or, like, get their oh. work out there. So we're actually creating roles for them to be in the show and then hopefully oh. build out a tour model where they can come on tour with us and get paid for their art um, and get a residual, get uh, become an actual, like, paid artist that they can use on their resume. So that it's not... For us, it's not just transactional. Come and do this workshop, and we're going to turn it into right, a show. Bye. Thank you. No. Right. But, like, at every standpoint, they're getting paid. They're getting training um, in theater production. So hopefully that's a skill that they can use. So, like, you say, hey, I need a stage manager on the fly. I probably will have a bunch of stage managers that we train yes. that we can, like, ship out. So then they have other opportunities to work beyond just the show, in addition to the show. So... That's um, why I know that I, I've dropped the ball on this, but I really want to connect you with my uh, queen diva poet friend, Lisa Jesse Peterson, another Philly sister, Philly family member that, here in New York. Um, I mean, she's been doing work in prisons for, for years now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's beautiful work. It's, it's, it's emotional, challenging, devastating yeah. work for yeah. her, but she's she's been in it. And I would love to link the two of you and see if there's some something you guys can do together on this because she's yeah. just thing i'm great i'll be grateful for any contacts and yeah yeah, yeah. i'm about i'll to share this school. interview with her once it's it's uploaded okay. um post this and, and and reach out to her about this so mm -hmm. all right so it's called public enemy do you have a debut mm -hmm. date a premiere date um, so we're going to film it. So hopefully sometime in October will be the premiere. Carmela Vassar Johnson, um, great filmmaker. Yes, Carmela. Danko, Danko, is yes. is going to film it and edit it for us. So hopefully we'll, we'll Vance Aklo will announce our season for um, next year um, in a couple of weeks. And then we'll have an official date like that. So I would say look for it around October 15th. That's awesome. Yeah. And tell me quickly, only because I saw the photos, what were you doing in Rwanda? What was I doing in Rwanda? So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I through um, through my connections with Anne Marie Forsyth and Milton Myers, um, who I'm doing writing my dissertation about. Shout out to everybody, including you, for letting me interview you about Milton. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been I've been fortunate. Miss Forsyth has been at, asked numerous times who can she recommend as a Horton teacher, and she graciously drops my name, and so I have to give her. Um, I have to honor her for that. So that took me to Australia, um, mm -hmm. developing relationships with the Aboriginal community there, Kim yes. down at NASA, teaching Horton there. And so um, in 2019, uh, Dan Taquel got invited to be a part of a fellowship from the Fulbright Hayes Fellowship through Goucher College. Um, and so we went on a month long tour of Eastern Africa to study and share. And so we went to African Leadership University in Kigali for two weeks um, studying African studies. And of course, my focus was on traditional Rwandan, dance, Kenny Rwandan dance. Um, and then we went to Mauritius for two weeks to do the same thing. Um, nice. And so there was that sharing and learning. It was, Rwanda is absolutely amazing. I love that place. That country mm -hmm. is so beautiful. If you ever get the opportunity to go anywhere in Africa, please go to Rwanda. Yeah, are you in touch yeah. with who's our brother friend that's doing stuff over there? Is Lamar Baylor? Yeah, Lamar was Lamar. I think still goes. He's working with um, Mind Leaves. Rebecca Mind Leaves, right? Rebecca Davis. So we we didn't get the opportunity to connect, but yes, I'm I'm familiar. Like they go off the, often and do great work there. Yep. Yeah, I I went to one of their meetings. Um, they were looking for you know more sponsorship and donors. Misty Copeland's a part of it, so I'm like sitting across the table from Misty, like, hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anytime I get in a room with Misty Copeland, I'm just like, hey girl. Wait, can I tell you this story about Misty real quick? It's not about yes, her, please. I, hopefully, she needs to. So hear this at some point. So I did a site visit for um, another organization in Philly. Um, and they had them do prompts. They had to pick an artist that they like, um, that they idolize. One person picked Debbie Man, and I was like, of course, um, because that person deserves to be idolized in every yeah. way. Um, and then the other girl, another young lady picked Misty Copeland. And so then they had to name, create the name of the school that they would want 
that artist to make. Mm -hmm. And this young lady said, the name of my school is the Misty Copeland Dance Institute for Magical Beings. I said, <laughs> I said, I just started crying. And she said it with so much pride and so much joy. Yes. And they had her say it again. And she was like, the Misty Copeland Dance Institute for Magical Beings. I said, okay. Uh, okay. Don't just love our babies. <laughs> I do. I Come do. on. <laughs> I do. And so honestly, but, with um, this damn pandemic, that's 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 what I'm missing. You know, yes, I miss all the the grandeur of our Central Park venue and all that and that, mm -hmm. you know, the free wine and all that good stuff. <laughs> but I what I really miss, and Monique can attest to that, you know, VIP. Okay. Um, I really miss being in the neighborhoods with these kids. Yeah. <laughs> I miss yeah. He's... Yeah, I, and I miss seeing you with the pictures. You know what? Like you, there'll be pictures, of course, of the master classes, right? <laughs> and there's one with me, you, Charisma. Charisma's teaching it. We're behind it. I guess it was a dance hall performance. But you with the kids is so. It's like it's a whole mood. Like you, and you're up there lost in it. Like you literally dancing with them, and the little girls looking at you. And it's such an infectious like way to capture. Oh the actual spirit of summer stage for those that haven't gotten to see summer stage under your your leadership yeah. but those pictures that they see uh, on your page literally is the physical representation of that spirit uh, um so if they're ever wondering what it's like the, and you know what's been really pictures. beautiful too the last three four years i mean citywide has kind of like built the new program that we've been doing that I inaugurated, which is like our youth matinee, mm -hmm. which is like one uh, one day per summer, we bring um, like the first year we had was Rennie Harris, and then that morning they did a matinee just for young people, and mm -hmm. our all our little camps would come, and at the end of the show, it's only like an hour, but at the end I go out in the audience with my little microphone, I'm like. What's your name? Where are you from? What you want to say? And it's like, it just takes me back to those old lectures we, we used to do with Phil Danko and Alvin Ailey and some of the questions. But this one year, I think it was, um, I had Fela, Fela the concert. Mm -hmm. And they did the matinee for the kids. And Charisma J's Abundance Dance Academy students, let me tell you something. It was the <laughs> second year in a row coming. And Charisma students, they were ready with their questions. They were mm. like, Ew, I would like to know. I mean, these kids were ready, okay? Oh, my God. And so yeah. I'm just really proud of her, Duana. This is all of everyone who is sticking with their communities. And, you know, whether your company is diverse or not, but you're still entrenched in your community because we have to. We have to yeah. be. And me mm -hmm. being a part of this dance community in this way um, it has been so rewarding, um, mm -hmm. and it's just been such a gift. But yeah, so can so. we talk about our queen? Can we, can okay, we, all right, listen, listen. I get it. We just joined you guys. You have about 15 more minutes because we're already at 609. You good? Oh my god, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, I'm here with you. so if you're just joining us, thank you, first of all. And I'm talking to Miss Iqbal Shahi, my baby brother from Philadelphia, okay, my dad's brother, <laughs> Iqbal Shahi, and I share an extremely ridiculous, almost scary <laughs> passion. I see you, Melissa. Right, right. For Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. What I tell you, I, I Quill is the only person I will call sobbing in the sobbing. phone. Sobbing. <laughs> no kids. Like, <laughs> she lost. So I Quail is my tennis brother, Zal. He yeah. plays. You do tournaments on your own. Yeah. I, mean, I try to play. I, the first time I tried to play with my boyfriend, I just knew I was going to go out there and be <laughs> Mr. Street Williams, and I was so mad at myself. Oh, my God. Oh I can barely keep the ball in the court. Oh. Can we talk about Serena? Because I think about your piece, Black Swan, and the 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 what's the word I'm looking for the the marginalization of Black women in mm -hmm. our society, mm -hmm. and I think part of why we're so passionate about Serena and Venus is because since they came on the scene, you know, with their beads clacking, falling, mm -hmm. honey, kids were right. at them. Kids were at them, and yeah. it hasn't really changed all that much, yeah. as we know. So true. So 
when did you first become aware? Was it when they first broke on the scene? Yeah, like, okay, so Serena Jamika Williams Ohanian, right? Just so in case people don't know my love for that. Serena right Jamika. Serena Jamika. Um, my, my grandfather, so not my biological grandfather, but my, uh, my grandmother's husband mm -hmm. um, was Senegambian. And he um, would like, it was one time in the summer, probably like 98, uh, 96, 97, he would watch either tennis or golf. He just happened to be watching tennis. And I sat next to him and I think he noticed that I had a, I, I liked watching it. I think I was bored at the time. And mm -hmm. so it was just on, so I was watching it. And so every time that Serena or Venus would come on TV, he, in his very thick accent, like, hey, quick, the tennis on the girls. And so I'm like, okay. So then I fell in love with them as a way to, to build this bond with my, my grandfather. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah. And so then we would always watch it together. And then lo and behold, like their magic just absorbed, like sucked me in. Right. Um, and so I think it was like 95, 96. It was before I was really dancing. Um, mm. And I wanted to be a tennis player. But then growing up in Philly, you know, there wasn't really tennis courts at that time. Mm. There wasn't all the programs for Black people to play tennis. Child, you got to have money. You got to have white sneakers, white tennis racket. You got to have right. change the strings. And so um, I, so I kind of looked at Venus and Serena as like, my idols, literally. Right. And so that's carried all the way through. And yeah. I get just as mad when she lose and I'll be ready to fight people when they talk about her. So please listen now. If you don't know, don't say nothing bad about Serena Williams. Don't about say bad about <laughs> <laughs> because Danny G and I, we do not play them games. We delete right away. Absolutely. Yo, we be having like Facebook <laughs> roll call, Raymond Lamar Bennett, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. honey. My girl yeah. Teresa Lavington, we're always, first of all, I'm at a point now, and because she's on the, I don't want to say decline, because she's not. I will, mm -hmm. I'll say the twilight of her career, maybe. Yeah. The twilight is a better word. Yeah. So it's really hard for me now, because she's not winning so, like, every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to watch the sh her play in real time, and that's just yeah. real. My, my boyfriend yeah. can attest. John, he'll be like, okay, we're not watching the match. No, we're not watching it live. I will right. wait to see the score. Right. And if she wins, I'll go back and watch it. And I'll be okay. Because <laughs> I know she's won already. Because my heart can't take it. Yeah. yeah. Serena, if you're watching, I, we, we love you so much. Right. We do. Right. And you know, and Serena, I'm so sick like, of talking about Margaret Court. Can we stop talking about Margaret Court, please? Can well, we first, stop? First of all, they wouldn't have been talking about Margaret Court if Serena never beat. Um, oh. The record at 22. Let's talk about that for real, for real. Because Margaret Court's record isn't really the real record. Thank now, you. all of a sudden, when Serena, again, it goes back to show you the measure of standard is always different for us. They raise the bar always. But you know what? Let them keep going. Because as my friend Daniel Hunt says, or De um, De Darrell Hunt, you can't outdo Black people. Yeah. So, you know, like, Y'all can keep raising a bar. We just gonna keep rising up. Like, and then Naomi Osaka is right there. As soon as Serena say, and I'm out, Nay Nay mm -hmm. is right there, like, boop, forehand. Boop, I love hand. Naomi. <laughs> and I love their relationship. And that's the other thing, too. People keep trying to like pit them together. And it's like, what was it that I saw? They were like, Naomi is not Serena's rival. She's Serena's legacy. Her legacy. Yep. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. It's true. Yep. Mm -hmm. Serena got what does Melissa say? Folks always trying to move the finish line. Okay. Okay, always. But you know, I think that that's what's brilliant about Serena um, and Venus, right? Venus being the first African American to reach number one. Um, you know, first one, first black person to win Wimbledon since Althea Leslie, and always pays deference to to them. But like the long lastingness of their career, um, you know, as a dancer, there's something beautiful and emotional as, as well about watching Serena in the twilight of her career mm -hmm. because we know what that's like you know that your body can only do a rag of bone and a hank of hair but so many more times right I it can know. only it can only do so many more sweet Otis's it can only <laughs> do so many more revelations right <laughs> and, <laughs> and listen they're gonna need to put me and you in straight jackets the day she calls listen. it I'm I'm done. Listen, I'm not I'm not I'm going away. I'm going to be in hibernation. Make sure y'all call me. Just put put me on the lifeline. You know I mm -mm, I can't. Even it was like it. for me when when Tim Duncan finally decided to retire from the Spurs. 
When you when I tell you I was sobbing I on my bed. I remember that. I remember knew. that. I remember because you it was all over your Facebook timeline at that time because Facebook was different. Like it would pop up Danny G trending. Like you it was like dee, 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 dee. You know. Yeah. But Serena mm. to me, she just embodies all that I feel we struggle with as not just black people, but black women always looked mm. at differently. You know, that angry black woman thing and mm -hmm. when she's just passionate and she's and she's she's about her business. And right. she knows her business and she knows hello. She is right. the best athlete. It's not separating it, the best woman athlete. She is the best athlete exactly. in the world. Exactly. Who's gonna stop that? You know, can I can I tell you this? Like that passion that you share about Serena uh, just now is like the same for me. You know, I was sleep one time on my couch like I fell asleep listening to something like trying to take a break and there was like a TNT or Verizon commercial came on and I was like it was Serena like Serena's voice is everywhere so when you talk about like how she is like about her business like she owns yes. her and Venus own part of Miami Dolphins like she like she's booked it's kind of like even when she's not even winning she is booked and that's why they be mad super they smart yeah, exactly. Her, exactly. Their mom, first of all, not having Shout it. Shout out to Orson. Yeah. So a good friend of mine, the agency he works for, um, Serena's agent, Jill, her longtime mm -hmm. manager agent, mm -hmm. is on their roster. Like, she works for them. So I'm like, oh. wait, so are you telling me I'm like one person away from, from meeting the queen? Now listen. <laughs> Danny G, if you get to meet Serena, we, okay, we, we're making this pack right now on Instagram Live. The first one of us that meet her got to bring the other one along. Yes, yes. We have to. Wait, so even like like a couple of years ago, you know Shanti, the fitness diva? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Shanti, you know, works with her in Florida, training, dance, some dance competition she and Venus have, which is so mm -hmm. cute. They both love dance, which is awesome. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was on the phone with my friend Calvin, or was I with my friend Calvin? I can't remember which it was, but he was with, right, I was, so I was with Calvin. He was on mm -hmm. the phone with Sean T. Serena was in the background, right? Oh, no. I was like, wait, Sean is with Serena right now? I said, Calvin, please, if you love me, if you say you love me, you are gonna tell Sean to tell Serena I love her. Right. <laughs> But did Calvin do it though? What he did. Calvin? And, oh, I, and I can hear Serena laughing in the background. Oh my God. Well, you know, I had, a similar, I had a yeah. similar one to that too. Um, you know, I was watching Lemonade and, you know, Serena makes an appearance in Lemonade. Yeah. I'm sorry. So when it came out, and so I'm looking for the credits to like see who did the choreography. And lo and behold, it says, sorry, choreography by Anthony Burrell. You know, I <gasps> called Anthony and I was like, how dare you? choreograph on Serena and you not tell me like Beyonce is Beyonce I get her I, I'm about Serena the way and so he started yeah. cracking up <laughs> yes oh uh, Anthony Burrell I, I need to get him on this show too I'm yeah. so glad you said Beyonce because before you go I did want to ask you because you're doing a series for your students tell me how Beyonce fits into that yeah, so teaching at a predominantly white institution in the south in Baltimore um so it's a couple of things. So the school is um, housed the, on the large, the, the land that is the, I don't know how to word this correctly. Um, it was the largest plantation in all of Maryland. Oh, wow. And the school acquired the land in 1918. And actually in the land deed, it said something to the effect that um, no persons, no black persons or persons of African descent can benefit from the purchase of this land in any way. Wow. And so there's a lot of trauma in that. And so I wanted to create a course or always create courses where the black kids that go to the school can recognize one, we've already been intellectual critical thinkers that collaborate. Like while these buzzwords in the academy are mm -hmm. buzzwords, I'm like, we do that by nature. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted them to have the opportunity to excel academically within black culture and like appreciating themselves in that culture. So I came up with a black performance course for us to study like the nature of black performance. Um, mm -hmm. And I centered it on Beyonce and we centered it on Lemonade. And then from there we branch out like talking about social issues, like how do they represent 
uh, how is it represented in this in this thing? We read mm-hmm. Bell Hooks. We watch other movies. Mm-hmm. So they they watch Wait to Exhale and Love and Basketball, so we could trace romantic relationships. And they was like, Professor Shahid, this was good and all, but back then in those centuries, they talked. I said, those centuries. What you talking about? <laughs> So it's, so it's a good way to like for me and them to talk about like these uh, these different arts aesthetics that are like black tropes, black aesthetics that show mm-hmm. up in Beyonce, and we trace it. Michael Jackson and Prince, like Beyonce, wasn't the first visual album. Prince, Purple Rain, yeah, Michael Jackson, Thriller, all of the, these things. Um, and then I have a companion course that I'm about to teach is um, is uh, what's up with that. Black men and women in hip hop. And so we're going to come up with another course that's looking at hip hop music and culture um, in the same way we're doing it with Beyonce. So that's what that course is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what because I, I watched it. I mean, I saw the photos on your 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 Facebook page, I think. Mm-hmm. But I was like, what's he doing with Beyonce? <laughs> you know what else I love? The picture that I found mm-hmm. of. Um, you with your dance company's banner on the back of the SEPTA bus. Mm. What a proud mm-hmm. moment. That's awesome. That was. That was proud. It but was you know, like that one poster. I forget what year it was. It was 95, I think. And it was the Ailey poster. And this was when the Ailey marketing department was really starting to cook and branch mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. And they were starting to put us on sides of buses. And I'll never forget. It's like a Sex in the City when Carrie goes by on the bus. Right. And I was like, oh, my God. My big old forehead <laughs> on the Wait, side what, of a bus. What picture? Um, that wasn't him, was it? It wasn't you and Lenny Meek? Was it that picture that was on the side of a it bus? It wasn't that photo. It was like some group photo. I think it was the year of him. Okay, so I guess it was 93, 94. But we're all kind of like wrapped up in twine. And it's my profile. Mm. It's me, mm-hmm. Matthew, Guillermo, Lydia, Corinne, Richard Witter. Mm. Richard I think Witter. that was, yeah, on the oh. side of I, Right, the kids, honey. Okay, listen. When I was at the <laughs> ALA school, ooh, are you going to be doing world. anything virtual? Um, so good, that's a good question. We um, and I wanted to go back to the side of the bus moment too. But so Dan Taquel did um, create a film in the pandemic um, called Feelings that I directed and choreographed and had my friend Andre Zachary do the cinematography for. <laughs> so actually. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that tonight on Instagram and Facebook. I was waiting to do this, and then oh I, my I, God. I would drop it afterwards. So that'll be the thing we drop as the premiere, and we'll do it just um, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited premiere. about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you're you're mentioning this right now. That's so awesome. I had no idea. Yeah, most people didn't, but um, we came together, and it's a little ditty we just did. Um, just to get our feet wet and keep my dancers engaged and like do what you have or what you have. And so mm-hmm. um, it's called Feelings. It's to Jasmine Sullivan's Pick Up Your Feelings. Um, and I was, you know, I was l- craving the 90s nostalgia in um, music videos. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is this like in dance? Like, let's do the same trope in dance. Um, and so we looked at a bunch of like, Heather Headley from early 2000s, ah, and like TLC. Mike Aida. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, so that'll drop tonight. But look, can I go back to the side of the bus for yes. a second? Proud moment. I was so happy. Yes. Don't you realize? Did you know that one person, only one person, came to that show? No. What do you mean? We did not sell well, and so it was an interesting lesson about. Um, you know how how to market because I my thought was like oh we're on these buses like all of this stuff, um, and so for like anybody that's working with a company and seeing that the lesson that I had to learn is that it's a really like it has to be part of a whole comprehensive mark excuse me marketing plan um, and generally those size of buses ads get you audiences a year or two years later. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, it's a way to introduce people to your name, but actually still the word of mouth was yeah. what we were missing. Ah, but my dance, my dancers were like, do we still have to do the show? I said, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. <laughs> Wait, did literally only one person show up? Listen, let me tell you something. Look, 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 look. When I had Sugar Bush, there would be times, yes, there would be like two people out there. But guess what? We were performing, like we were at Madison Square Garden. I okay. was rocking out as okay. if I was a performer in front of 20,000 in a stadium. Because, okay. Because my band it, would be like, I'm like, be, whatever. 
because it goes These back. These two people showed up. Right. Because it goes back to the, the thing. Well, we, that's how we were brought up. If it's one, if you can reach one person in the audience, that right. was the job. And so luck, not- luckily, we only had one person in the <laughs> audience. So, and we gave them a show. And she, we, uh, me and that audience member, um, we talked about that for a really long time. They happened to be visiting and wanted yeah. to see something. And so, but it was a nice lesson to learn administratively. Yeah. That was probably in year eight of the organization. So mm-hmm. obviously we've grown and learned a lot from Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I cannot wait, number one, to see the show tonight, the finger dropping tonight. Yeah. Um, and, I'll, and I'll share it as well. So tune into that, guys. Please follow I Quail Shahid and Dance I Quail on Instagram so you make sure you see him dropping the hotness tonight. And mm-hmm. keep me posted about Public Enemy, that's going to be major. And you know what's interesting about that? Um, I think you know the story, but I never got to meet my my paternal grandfather. Mm. And but all the work that he did, he was a Virginia councilman, was fighting um, the criminal justice system and how the the unevenness, I'm not saying this right, but, you know, mm-hmm. incarceration of Black men, especially. Yeah. And, and even now, like with New York, you know, legalizing weed. weed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so... Wherever, wherever the illegal amounts are, I'm, I mean, are those people that were locked up for those amounts, are they now going to be out? Right. Is, will their records be expunged? Mm-hmm. I don't know all of that. Right. But, yeah. So I, I can't wait. I'm going to promise to remember to connect you with Lisa, Jesse Peterson. Yeah. And anything else you want to share that we should know how we can go to the website? I close website is in my bio. Yep. Go to the website, donate, 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 donate if you can, whatever you can. Absolutely. I think he made two two dollars and fifty cents his cut <laughs> okay. on his first show. So even if you only got two fifty, right. donate your two fifty. Right, right. And no, yes. I, I I say yes. Thank you for that. We can always use um, more financial support, and more financial advocacy, of course, so we can continue to be out here doing this work with our community mm-hmm. um, in these ways. I want to say thank you to you, Danny. You have been doing this work in so many ways for so long, and um, I'm honored to call you a friend yeah. beyond just a work colleague or industry colleague, but like literally, like between Serena or just like <laughs> kicking it with a glass of wine or like talking at a at an event or even like business wise, like yeah. our love for Jean Hill Sagan's work. Oh. Um I, I I deeply appreciate you and thank you for having me on this space. And um yeah, I can't wait to I'm see so glad we got to do this. And I can't wait to see you in person. I'm planning on I mean I know you go back and forth between Maryland, Philly, New York, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm planning to be in Philly hopefully late April. Take up some time to see my mom. Yep. And uh, yeah, just be down there. So hopefully our our paths will cross. And it, I, people are saying hi, the love in the room. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Yeah, uh, so happy my, Easter and all that good stuff. Yeah, love to keep me posted. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, stay safe. Your brothers are good. How are your brothers doing? They're good. Twenty one <laughs> and twenty five. Oh my gosh! I can't wow. believe it. Yeah, they're they're grown. They're grown. One is about they're to graduate grown. college. Um, wow. Yeah. Well, I know, and I'll, only because I know personally, and I won't you know divulge too much. But I know you have kept them together, so yeah. I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I so know much. it's not been easy. Yeah. No, it hasn't been, but. You know, I have my mom looking me over my shoulders. I have like the the love of the dance community literally yeah. have been like helping me shepherd them since they were four and seven. Now they're twenty one and twenty four. And so um yeah, and I'm grateful. So thank you for yeah. asking about them. So we need to catch up further. I'll reach out to you this week and early next week as we spoke about and thank you for doing this. It was so thank funny. You. How do I get all live? <laughs> But I got on, and you can hear You me. did. It was perfect. Yeah. It was um, perfect. You're amazing. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of us. Yes. Thank and we're going to keep it going. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Do you know how to let yourself out? You need me to close you out? I think so. I'll just X out. I think okay. That, Love work. you. Love Go you, Go, Serena. She right. got She got two, three more in her. We know it. We know you can do it. She can do it. She can do it. And I'll be right there yelling at her for my fire stick. <laughs> All right. Bye, Aquil. Oh, my goodness. That was the great Aquil Shahi. We love, 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 love him. So, uh, my Philly brothers, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It feels good to be back. Next week, I have another amazing brother 
who was, did one of my first ever shows when it was all rough and tumble, Mr. Desmond Richardson from Come Connections Contemporary Ballet. He's going to update us on what the company is doing as well as their summer intensives. So Desmond is back after nine months. Um, our first Danny G Live interview. So Desmond is back next week. After that, the following week, we have Tanisha Guy from Kyle Abraham's company, Abraham in Motion. And um, following that, just more and more. So stay tuned. Follow iQuil on Instagram so you can see his video drop tonight. Um, again, make sure you check out the memorial to my, my dear friend, um, Mums Craig, Mums the Schemer, uh, beloved. And as always, I'm sharing like books that I get and I just got, can you guys see that? Dance We Do, the last publication of Intazake. Sean, yeah, I can't wait to go through this, right? It just came out, it's all backwards, but is it by Intazake, Dance We Do, A Poet Explores Black Dance. So. Can't wait to get to this. And yes, so as always, stay safe. You know, people are getting vaccinated. We are trying to get open New York. Arts are coming back. So just hang in there, folks. And we will get through this and get back to life. So I love you. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, Melissa. I got to get you on, too, and talk about your journey as the new artistic director for Dallas Black Dance. <laughs> um, yeah. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. Stay safe in these streets and check out the links in my bio to get connected. And um, that's it. I will see you all next Friday.